in the decision support systems for the computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing we were discussing about the pre and the post processes in the last lecture there are certain file formats or we call it entity types which are important to be discussed and what are these formats how are they developed and where does the lead us to the product data exchange has certain or standard neutral data formats we call it neutral data formats or we call it the entities now there are different kinds of the data requirements or the requirements for the exchange the data is available in the form of a shape when it is shape data shape data means both geometric and topological information that parts or form features the fonts colors everything that turns or comes into the shape data geometric or topological data this is one kind second kind of data that we have is the non shape data for the non shape data that means the graphics data such as the shaded images and uh, the model global data as may be measuring units of the database the resolution of storing the database the numerical values so all these come under the non shape data which is not exactly the shape but it is defining or it is the periphery of the shape that is also important next kind of the data that we have is the design data by design data i mean the information which is used by designers to generate different geometric models for analysis purposes so this is generally the three different formats that we discussed in the last lecture solid surface and wireframe these are in these formats so mass property and maybe the file and element analysis file and element mesh data that we have that also comes here in the design data only mesh data or mesh format then we have the manufacturing data so that is why we call it as a almost a big data system because lot of entities are there which are calculated together for each tool point whatever the nc tool paths are generated so different points have different coordinates and from each point to another point when the machine moves it could be absolute or it could be incremental uh, movement that we have so different kinds of manufacturing data sets are there which contains the information regarding the tool parts regarding the tolerances regarding the process planning the tool design bill of material also comes into this category only so these different kinds of the data are there the standard neutral data formats could be different types like igs which is initial graphics exchange specification dxf which was way back generated in 1980s or so by autodesk holy which is drawing interchange format then step that is standard for the exchange of product 
model data. Other than this also we have dot PRT, we have dot STL, then we have ACIS and so on. They are different formats, different software support and we can keep talking about them. Let us only discuss about the basic formats which are there. So, IGES that is initial graphics exchange specification, this is the most popular format for the neutral file. This is supported by different CAD, CAE, CAM systems and it is defined by the ISO systems, different quality management systems as well. So, it was first developed in 1980 and it was adopted by American National Standard Institute by ANSI in 1980s only. IGES use different versions were there IGES version 1 to maybe IGES version 5. The recent versions uh, now can also help us to have the BREP data of solids. So, IGS used two distinct Cartesian coordinate systems that is MCS that is machine coordinate systems and WCS that is the world coordinate system both are used by them. So, if an entity is directly described relative to a MCS then no transformation is required. So, this is achieved in the IGES by setting the value of the matrix pointer to 0 to prevent unnecessary processing. So, IGES format if I try to talk about it has a line that is consisting of 80 characters. It was originally developed in the Fortran that is the formula translation data format. Now, IGES has major I would say 6 sections. Number 1 is black section. So, as defined by ASCII, which is American Standard Code for Information Exchange, black section is the one that is used with compressed ASCII and binary formats. It is a single record line that precedes the start section in the IGES. This is optional sometimes. So, with the character C uh, in the column, it identifies the file as compressed ASCII file. The compressed form is intended to simply to be converted to form an regular ASCII form. In the binary format, the flag section is called binary information and it is given the code B in the binary format and C for ASCII. This is an optional section only. Important section is the start section. Start section is a human readable introduction to the file that means it is commonly described in a prologue to the IGS file. This section includes the user element information such as the name of the CAD CAM system that is generating this IGS file and a brief description of the product being converted. The IGS does not specify how this section could be used but it is definitely user can tailor them to their own requirement. Next is the global section. Global section includes the major information that is describing the preprocessor the, and the information needed by the postprocessor because it is a neutral file. So, we have information about preprocessor here. Then uh, the information that is needed by the postprocessor to be interpreted by the file that is also given here in the global section. Some of the parameters that are specified in this section are the characters such as the delimiters between the individual entries and between the records. So, the name of the IGES file, the vendor, the software version of sending CAD CAM system, all these things fall in the global section. Next is the directory entry section. When I say directory entry, 
it is the one that has the 80 characters that I talked about. So, directory entry is the list of all the entities which are defined in the IGS file together. So, here different entities are there, then entities are divided into different fields, then the field contains uh, the a pointer to the parameter of data entry for the entity in the parameter data section. So, the next is the parameter data. Parameter data means the actual data which defines each entity listed in the previous section that is in the directory entry section. For example, in the directory entry suppose if you have given a straight line, straight line has two endpoints x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, 6 points are there. These 6 points are the directory entry parameter data will tell each value x1, x2, x3 as individual, each parameter will talk about as an individual value. So, it will have the information regarding this. There are different characters which are also keeping a record of the parameter data. Next, we terminate the format here and we call it as terminate section. In the terminate section, it contains a single record which specifies the number of records in each of the four preceding sections for the checking purpose only. So, these four sections are major. Flag, this is optional this is only end. These are the details. Next, let us talk about the DXF format. DXF that is the drawing interchange format. So, these DXF formats were originally developed to give users some flexibility in managing the data and translating the very basic AutoCAD files into the formats that could be read and used by other CAD CAM systems. So, because of the popularity of the AutoCAD, this became very common. It is such as like still we have the three letter extension files because MS DOS systems were very common and it still uses three dimension extension. Like we have DOC file, dot PDF file, we have EXL file. So, in the similar fashion AutoCAD became so famous and DXL file became one of the most prominently used files. So, almost every newly introduced software whether it is CAD, CAM or CAE, they tend to provide translators to and from the DXL file. So, DXL file is again an American standard code for information exchange text file and consists of 5 sections. It has a header. Header describes the AutoCAD drawing environment that existed when DXF was created. AutoCAD drawing environment. Then we have a table. When I say table, it contains the information about the line types, layers, the tabulated information is everything here. The textiles, the views, it is a tabulated information. It has a block. The block contains a list of graphic entities which are defined as a group. Group of then we have an entity. Entity means it immediately follows the block section and serves the main part of the DXF file. So, this says all the entities and the drawing description is there. Then we terminate. That we try to end the file. So, there are certain limitations of IGES and DXF formats. Both of them were developed to exchange product definition data instead of product data. So, product data is also required that means the design, the manufacturing, the quality assurance, the testing, support. 
throughout the entire life cycle of the product this information is also required to be kept as an record in an archive data so even though the specification of IGES and DXF files have broadened to cover some of these product data the data carried out by these files are still insufficient to give us a complete support for the product data throughout the life cycle of it so that is why there is a need or a call to have another format that is STEP which is also known as PDES that is product data exchange standard now this is there to support any industrial application such as mechanical electrical plant design architecture engineering construction so all of these could be support which means in the architecture of the step which is standard for exchange of product data when you try to draw its architecture it supports mechanical electrical plant design architecture and so on all of these are supported by the STEP file so we go for the general entries through them and also we have application specific entries then we have this neutral file format which is our STEP so in this case the neutral file format has uh, different layers of the architecture and the data exchange units as well so this neutral file has within itself the layers of architecture layers means it could be electrical mechanical if i am talking about a product let we talk about the product of this interactive pen itself this pen has having a plastic body over it it has a uh, tip that is maybe a soft or rubber tip it has a button here it has a button at the back it has a software interaction so there are different electronics mechanical links or different layers of architecture which are there there are all connected here and this neutral file format also has the data exchange unit so majorly step is for the life cycle management data if those is required throughout the service life it's, it is to be worked upon that is why we call the product data exchange standard now is our step for instance uh, the softwares like the ANSYS workbench uses step for its working now step is an ISO data an ISO data standard that is it is accepted by the ANSI and many international bodies which help to support the industrial automation step files are fully interpretable by computer 
for instance if the tolerance information is required that can be directly taken from the computer rather from the computer a text which uh, requires human intervention to interpret. So, the information given in the step format is associated with those entities which are required in different kinds of the application in different kinds of the use of the features of the system for instance tolerances, the electrical information that all could be extracted from the step files. So, these are the major three files that I have discussed. So, with this uh, I will stop for this week and we will discuss about the part programming and also we will see additive manufacturing systems which are helpful to have the smart or digital manufacturing coming into place. Thank you.